Well, this one it can bring a tear to your eye. It's a cup of brandy that no one wants to drink. On Tuesday in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, the surviving Doolittle Raiders gathered publicly for the last time. They once were among the most universally admired and revered men in the United States. Well, there were 80 the Raiders in April of 1942 when they carried out one of the most courageous and heart-stirring military operations in this nation's history. And the mere mention of their unit's name in those years would bring tears to the eyes of a lot of grateful Americans. Now only four survive. After Japan's sneak attack on Pearl Harbor with the United States reeling and wounded, something dramatic was needed to turn the war effort around. Even though there were no friendly airfields close enough to Japan for the United States to launch a retaliation, a daring plan was devised. Sixteen B-25s were modified so that they could take off from the deck of an aircraft carrier. This had never been done before, or never even been tried, sending such big heavy bombers from a carrier. Well, the 16 five-man crews under the command of Lieutenant Colonel James Doolittle, who himself flew the lead plane off the USS Hornet, knew that they would not be able to return to the carrier. They would have to hit Japan and then hope to make it to China for a safe landing. But on the day of the raid, the Japanese military caught wind of the plan. The raiders were told that they would have to take off from much further out in the Pacific Ocean than they had counted on. They were told that because of this, they would not have enough fuel to make it to safety. Well, those men, they went anyway. They bombed Tokyo, and then they flew as far as they could. Four planes crash-landed, eleven more crews bailed out, and Three of the raiders died. Eight more were captured and three were executed. Another died of starvation in a Japanese prison camp. One crew made it to Russia. The Doolittle Raid sent a message from the United States to its enemies and to the rest of the world that we will fight and no matter what it takes, we will win. Of the 80 raiders, 62 survived the war. They were celebrated as national heroes, models of bravery. The Metro Golden Mare produced a motion picture based on the raid. It was called 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. Beginning in 1946, the surviving raiders have held a reunion each April to commemorate the mission. The reunion is in a different city each year. In 1959, the city of Tucson, Arizona, as a gesture of respect and gratitude, they presented the Doolittle Raiders with a set of 80 silver goblets. Each goblet was engraved with the name of a raider. And every year, a wooden display case bearing all 80 goblets is transported to the Reunion City. Each time a raider passes away, his goblet is turned upside down in the case at the next reunion as his old friends bear solemn witness. Also in the wooden case is a bottle of 1896 Hennessy Very Special Cognac. The year is not happenstance. 1896 was when Jimmy Doolittle was born. There has always been a plan that for there are only two surviving raiders, they would open the bottle at last and drink from it and toast their comrades who have preceded them in death. Well, as 2013 began, there were five living raiders. Then, in February, Tom Griffin passed away at the age of 96. The selfishness of these men and the sheer guts that there was a passage in the Cincinnati Enquirer obituary from Mr. Griffin that on the surface had nothing to do with the war, but emphasized the depth of his sense of duty and devotion. When his wife became ill and needed to go into a nursing home, he visited her every day. 
He walked from his house to the nursing home and he fed his wife and at the end of the day he brought home her clothes. At night he washed and ironed her clothes. Then he walked them back up to her room the next morning and he did that for three years until her death in 2005. So now, out of the original 80, only four Raiders remain. Dick Cole, who was Doolittle's co-pilot on the Tokyo Raid. Robert Height, Edward Saylor, and David Thatcher. All of these men are in their 90s. And they have decided that there are too few of them for the public reunions to continue. The events in Fort Walton Beach this week will mark the end. It has come full circle. Florida's nearby Elgin Field was where the Raiders trained in secrecy for the Tokyo mission. The town is planning to do all it can to honor the men. A six-day celebration of their valor, including luncheons, a dinner, and a parade. But do the men ever wonder if those of us for whom they helped save the country have tended to it in a way that is worthy of their sacrifice? Well, they don't talk about that, at least not around other people. But if you find yourself near Fort Walton Beach this weekend, and if you should encounter any of the Raiders, you might want to offer them a word of thanks. I can tell you from first-hand observation that they appreciate hearing that they are remembered. Well, the men have decided that after this final public reunion, they will wait until a later date, sometime this year, to get together once more informally and in absolute privacy. That is when they will open the bottle of brandy. The years are flowing by too swiftly now. They are not going to wait until there are only two of them. Well, they will fill the four remaining upturned goblets and raise them in a toast to those who are gone. This was their 70th anniversary.